How good are you at manifesting what you want in life? Are you able to attract and experience what you truly desire? Or do you question if you can really make it happen? Or if you deserve your dreams enough? Have you tried multiple times but seem to be feeling blocked or exhausted by failed results? Well, manifestation is essentially the act of feeling something is yours and making it real. When you manifest something, you're making it known to the universe that this thing, whether it's a dream job or a new car, will be yours. If any of this resonates, then tune in to today's episode. Welcome, Soul Tribe, to another exciting episode, one I feel you'll all be keen to listen to once more after you listen to it the first time. Why? Well, we explore the power of manifestation. And today we have the lovely Minnie Courtney. She's a manifestation coach, content creator, and beauty business owner from the UK. Her mission is to empower women to create complete freedom and abundance in their lives through manifestation, mindset, and inner healing. After her own personal journey with overcoming depression, anxiety, and self-doubt, she's managed to create a joyful life with multiple dream careers, world travel, and fulfillment. How amazing is that? So with that being said, welcome, Minnie. How are you? Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So it's so cool because um, I, the way we met was through actually social media and I have my moments with it because I think it can be, you know, the beast and then it can be the rainbow. <laughs> and sure. we we connected sort of kind of serendipitously. So that was great timing. And I thought what you're about is really aligned to a lot of what we talk about on the Divine Feminines podcast on our page. And really, I know the topic of manifestation, it can, it can be really exciting, but it can really aggravate people because they've tried to do it or they've, or they've done it before. And then the next time it's like, well, why is it not working? Why am I not getting what I want? But there's, there's more to it, right? There's, there is kind of a science to this and we have to embody it on multiple levels, I think. So I'm really excited to get your insight and some of what you do with your clients and your own personal experience, um, having said that. But before we get into it, there's more about you that I thought was really interesting, right? You you have these really, you know, incredible gifts that you obviously are able to work with and to help your own manifestations and evolution of your own journey. You've also mm-hmm. been able to leverage that with others, but before you got to that point, and I know you're still very young, I feel quite old if I'm thinking <laughs> about it now. <laughs> you look very young. But you you became interested in spirituality at the age of 12. I mean, that's pretty young. I just wanted to know about your earlier years, earlier, earlier years. And um, <laughs> and just, yeah, just get a bit more of an understanding of what you've been through and what you've been motivated by. Mm, yeah, definitely. It's It's a bit of a a bit of a strange one that the 12 years old and you can quite imagine little 12 year old me running into school talking about you know spirituality and all sorts of stuff so it was yeah it was definitely a big thing that shaped my journey because I didn't feel like I fitted in with with others really um and I think that was a really big part of where I went into that depression and that anxiety and and that really dark place like around the age of 14 so it's all happening very quickly and but you know I think uh, and I'm sure you agree that we all have that inner knowing like within us and as children a lot of the time we're more connected to that so I'd I I was more on that sort of wavelength um at the age of 12 um you know and obviously struggled with different things throughout childhood but I was just very spiritually inclined um so I just dived into all that sort of stuff at the age 12 I was reading books like watching YouTube videos um, and things like that um I was interested in witchcraft and manifestation spirituality all those different things um, and then I kind of went to secondary school and you know that's when all those sorts of things start to come up um of like what's normal what's acceptable how you should be what's pretty what do boys want all of those sorts of heavy things and um, and I really lost my sense of self I really lost my connection and was looking outside myself for validation basically and 
obviously we have to go through them things. Now I'm very grateful for that. And I am able to connect with a lot of women who are also, you know, feel those sorts of anxious thoughts coming up, looking for external validation and they don't have the inner peace. And, you know, I might not be able to do that if I hadn't been through that. Um, so anyway, at the, right, at the age of 16, I was able to kind of move through that, reconnect back to who I was and really like rekindle my connection to, to my inner power and manifestation from there. Wow. Okay. Now I do feel old because you said, and I'm just going <laughs> to say this, you said when I was 12, there was YouTube. When I was 12, we just about <laughs> had color TV. No, we had color TV. We, we, when I was 12, I think Sky started to get a bit more developed. But you still only right. had 20 channels on Sky. Mm. Just, and maybe cable came out, just to give you some context <laughs> of why I'm saying I feel old. But I still feel young at heart. <laughs> but that's yeah. really cool. I mean, like I said, social media can be the beast or the rainbow. And it seems like, you know, you, you came across content that could actually really set you up for the longer term. But sometimes the more you know, the more you know, blessing and a curse, right? And... That's what I feel like you kind of probably knew a lot more for your age and then really didn't fit in and you felt different as well. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because I do kind of connect with that for myself of like I the quote of it's a both a blessing and a curse to feel so deeply. And I always kind of really connected with that. And in terms of social media, I think, you know, just like everything in our external world is a reflection of us. I think that's totally the same with social media, which is why at 12, I was searching for videos on spirituality and witchcraft. And then at age 14, I was watching the most harmful content. You know, it didn't make me feel good. Wow. You know, and that's what, what social media turned into. So I think if anyone is struggling with, you know, they're like, when I go onto Instagram, I feel feel this way it's always so much more productive to turn that like put instead of pointing that finger out at social media point it back to yourself and be like okay what can I shift like who can I unfollow and um, is it the time of day I'm using it do I need to follow new people like what can I do what where is this reflecting what's inside me I love that you said point the finger finger inward and I mm -hmm. think everything in life needs to be like that right you know, even when you think about relationships and you go, but they did that. And this, but wait, what did you, what is going on with you? We can't control what's going on out there and anyone else, but what can we do here? It's all, all about the shadow work, which I know we're going to get into, which I know you have some good stuff to talk about. So let's get into the whole power of manifestation. I mean, I, I think it's an incredible concept that, that is also a reality. And I think that it's not talked about enough or embraced or discussed and just celebrated enough from young. I think, you know, it, you may, you may want to like bucket it with things like, oh, but manifestation is a bit of a witchcraft thing. And then it's spirituality. Oh no, you can't because you're in that religion or, oh, it's only the law of attraction. And I just putting it out there that, there's been many a thing said that the law of attraction does have a lot of relevance, but there's more to it, which I believe because I feel like manifestation has to be on several levels of, of, of what you do, which I want to talk about with you. But if we just start with what is actually possible to manifest, like if some, if I said to you, Minnie, can I just manifest um, a castle for a home? You know, is that realistic? Uh, what's your point of view? Mm, oh, I love that interesting the example that you provided there. So what I always say about manifestation is anything that is possible within the physical laws of science on our earth is possible to manifest. And even that is pushing it because who am I to say that people haven't broke those bounds? You know, I'm sure they do. But that's really what I work with. So there are people who live in castles as their home. So I totally believe that's possible if that's something that you wanted to manifest. And it's like you said, there are lots of different layers to it. And then again, the actual uh, laws of the world come into play. So is that your priority? Do you want to sacrifice these other things to achieve that manifestation? Mm -hmm. If so, then you can do it. Is that a priority for you that, you, that you're going to do whatever work is needed? You're going to shift yourself in whatever way is needed to actually 
you know, make that a reality? Because if so, then yes. And I like I like what you said. You said, are you going to put in the work? Are you going to shift um, what you need to in yourself and in how you apply yourself? And how do you prioritize against it? I think, you know, I want to just like stop on that point there and just kind of open this one up with you is that I do think that a lot of people that get frustrated by manifesting, right, is that they say to the universe, like, I want, it's I want, right? The I want, or they're putting out the I want energy, right? Because we have to, it's the energy, right? That the universe picks up on the vibration. But the I want, or I, you know, I want it now. And then maybe not doing anything in the actual. So you work with the 5D. I'd like to say 5D is the universal laws of, you know, energy and working with the vibration. But the 3D is where we are in our physical world. If you're doing that, but you're not doing anything tangible in your physical sense, like even just making some steps to actually make it happen, you're not going to manifest it, are you? Like there's got to be some give and take. Like you can't just get, I want to manifest that and just sit back and then go, oh, like two weeks has passed. Yo, universe, what's up? (laughs) And I think there's there's like you you've kind of said there is a lot more layers than some I guess if you're trying to use manifestation as a as an easy way out then it's not and also another misconception is that it's like manifestation is some sort of method that's separate from normal life actually it's literally just how everything is in existence it's just the principles of the universe um, so it's not like something separate that you need to do. It's rather just a way of life that you need to understand. Um, and then also, I love what you said about the kind of the 3D and the 5D and the physical action, because again, I don't understand really the obsession with like sometimes move, like moving into this 5D and just working with the spiritual side of things and the energy side of things, I think can become an ego trap in itself because your soul is here on 3D Earth for a reason. You chose to come to 3D Earth, not so you can have no limitations and create anything with your mind instantly because if you wanted that, you wouldn't be here on Earth. You're here on Earth to understand physical limitation. So yes, manifestation is going to require that work and that's what you signed up for to come here to Earth and that's what we need to find joy in and enjoy that process. I love what you said. That That's really cool because it's true. I, I resonate with the fact that we are souls living a human experience, right? And why did we come to earth? You know, we signed up, I believe, and this is for anyone's opinion, they can believe other which way of this, but we sign up a soul contract to experience what life is like on earth and to learn lessons. And like you said, there will be limitations. There are, you know, there's free will, there's things that we cannot control. That means that we are tested of our ego because we can't control. We are also tested of patience. We're tested of many things. And it doesn't mean that we cannot manifest. And I also love what you said. Manifestation is really just the way we live, understanding it's a way of life and being and living and breathing that kind of way of life. But also understanding probably the art of divine timing, which I've spoken about before. You know, everything happens in the right time. If it, if you try to force something, you won't actually have the right or the best experience or outcome mm-hmm. for yourself. Mm, yeah and it's just like you said before that it's it is all about the energy and the energy that you're putting out and that's one of the many paradoxes of manifestation there's so many paradoxes in manifestation because life is a paradox so that's 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 the reality of life because yes the the insinuation with you trying to manifest something is that you lack it now that you don't have it now but in order to actually be in your magnetic power you need to be full where you are right now and in a place of complete gratitude so I think those paradoxes um, are something that people struggle with a lot as well Um, and just kind of understanding and that's I think that's what I mean as well with, with making it a lifestyle rather than like something you're doing to achieve a goal it's actually just a way of of, of living um, and yes you through that do get to experience these amazing external things and, and bring more intentionality to your external reality 
but that's that's not the core of manifestation for me yeah absolutely and what I want to get into now is the mindset side of things because I think mindset and vibration right because if you are in a victim mentality mode and you're like oh but and you're complaining all the time oh I don't have this and I don't have that and this happened and then I and you're just focusing on moaning and all of that well really and truthfully you're only going to create more of that or more experiences that bring that vibration and ultimately you're in a low vibration so my my feeling and from personal experience is that, it, it, you know, the way of life, like you said, we all can benefit from living a higher, a higher vibrational life. Right. And if we put the steps in to have that higher vibrational life on a daily basis, even though there'll be waves, you know, some waves bigger than the others. I, I, I've had a wave the other day, like literally yesterday. And I was like, OK, it's a wave. Cool. Ride the wave and just keep going. But you are committed to that. You know, I want a high vibrational life in all I do. And I try to keep myself centered. So the mindset is is integral in this. So I just wanted to get your opinion on, you know, how do you create the right mindset to be able to manifest? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that for sure, manifestation can't like really exist without shifting your mindset. Um, and also I think anyone doing mindset work is manifesting even you know if they don't realize it so they're very connected and how to get into the right mindset for manifestation I think the first thing that comes to mind when we think about a high vibrational life uh, and it's great that you kind of mentioned those waves is that we sometimes then go into I think humans have a really big tendency to overcorrect so I think we go into I need to be positive all the time and again, when we <laughs> look, look I'm under laughing the sun. because it's so true and it's not a reality, right? <laughs> the thing is that everyone goes through a <laughs> spiritual journey, you know, and then you're judging anyone who's bringing any negativity into your life because how dare they be low vibe in when you're a person. And, you know, it's so funny when you look back and you're just like, oh, the, the lessons of life, you know, because you've got to look a few le levels deeper and think about like why you're choosing every action why like why do you want to feel positive what is the way that you're reacting to this outside negative situation like what is the vibration of that um so for example if something negative happens and you have a negative thought and then you start to get annoyed at yourself that you have a negative thoughts you you can take a step back into that seat of awareness like to the the third person like um observer and be like okay that's not actually productive that's actually causing to be, you to be in more of a state of resistance rather than if you just accepted that you're having a wave right now you're having a negative thought that in itself would send to you again that in itself would bring you into a flow of allowing um another paradox so I think it's a journey of self-discovery with mindset because our brains are, you know, infinitely complex. We live in a infinitely complex society that's constantly like giving us challenges. So I, again, I think that's really part of the beauty of life and exploring that constantly upon your journey. I think you got just got to keep questioning your thoughts and your feelings and if they are actually serving you throughout your whole journey and I think the moment when you think that you've mastered any of these things you again fallen into an ego trap and it's time to question again yeah yeah no you've really articulated that like so eloquently like thank you and there was a few things that you said that was you know at the beginning we were laughing but the whole thing about you know I talk about and I've talked about this many a times having a positive mindset doesn't mean that you're not going to have a bad day or a bad moment and it's being able to just recognize it and go I see it for what it is that doesn't make me that that feeling I'm not going to be that feeling or that situation it happened and it I move on same with emotions like I'm feeling these emotions but they're passing through me and that's the waves I'm riding but also with people you know there are people in our lives that, you know, they are genuinely good for us, right? They actually are. And they are meant to be on our journey. And 
we can have those experiences with them where it's fantastic, but they all have their days. And then you might pick up on their vibe, but doesn't mean that you need to get rid of them from your life like that, right? Or they're blocking your manifestation. You know, oh, this person had a bit of a bad vibe and a mood. I've got to get out of the room because I'm trying to manifest something. Like, no, no, I can't deal with them. No, but there are people that are meant to come in our journey. And then when the time's done and the lesson's learned, They've got to go because certain toxicities keep replaying and that's probably not healthy, right? And will affect your point of centre to try and manifest. But I think um, the mind and emotions, because the emotional intelligence is key, right? If we, if we don't recognise that, you know, we are ourselves, we have the ability to feel multiple emotions at any given point, but we don't become them unless we allow ourselves to become them. And then you're kind of living in that emotion. And the good analogy is, I just like to have a cry sometimes, you know, um, <laughs> I've been having a few lately, but I'm, I'm a water sign. So it works. And I'm not, I'm quite open and proud about it. But I will have that cry. And I'll really like, get that cry out. And afterwards, I'm like, right, I'm back. You know, and then I'll be working on something or doing something or just my my whole scene and setup completely changes from that cry. But it was my outlet and it was like me recognizing I needed to do something, release an emotion, acknowledge an emotion and keep wow. it moving. And that won't affect the emotional body, the mindset, the mentality. Right. Uh, yeah, those are like amazing points. And I think the first thing about the relationships is that um like you said some everyone's gonna have their day no one's gonna be good vibes all the time just the way that you're not you can't expect that from other people and i think it's really disempowering sometimes when you start this journey and, and you feel like any low vibe situation is gonna ruin your manifestation and pull you down it's like actually like be in your vibration, like stand in yourself. And, you know, if those people are genuinely valuable relationships to you, then you can just, you know, hold your vibration through it. And you, you can still question, like, is this, again, just like you do with the thoughts, question, is this serving me? Is this relationship serving me? Um, and I think the real power through the thoughts and the emotions, like you said, like even is to be able to come into your, higher self so to just break that down it's just exactly what i said before which is observing your human self observing your ego and that consciousness that is observing is your higher self so that's a really great way to detach um from claiming those emotions and those thoughts as you because you're actually the awareness that is viewing those thoughts that is observing the feeling of those emotions and um, and then when you have that awareness and you can always step back into that awareness you have your power you know and no one can take that from you everything you were saying I love what you were saying about the observing and the higher self absolutely and that is something that you don't just you don't nail it it's not an exam guys it literally mm -hmm. is it's an ongoing journey to understand like when I think I've nailed a lesson of my ego, another one pops up and I'm like, oh, here we go. This is ego. You hear that? Okay, okay. I need to work with, you know, we need our ego. Don't get me wrong, but we need to know how to manage the ego with our with our soul's desire as well and with what we call our center, right, for our soul. And I just wanted to talk about, so we talk about the mental and the and the emotional sort of, basis of manifesting but I also think that considering our physical health and our lifestyle is also key to true manifesting power I've seen it said by many a manifestation coach or spiritual leaders let's say or gurus and and I do get that because I think if you're not in a good like again all, all of it is vibration so to be in a high vibration or a good vibration then you need to be active looking after your body you know moving around getting some exercise eating good vibrational foods what, what's your thoughts yeah absolutely and I think of it as whether you're being the creator basically and whether you're in an empowered state to create that that's kind of like my viewpoint on whether you're 
let's say, doing a good job at manifesting, you know, even though we're all manifesting without realizing what yeah. when we talk about manifestation, we're obviously talking about with intention, like to direct it where we want it to go, of course. So if you're um damaging yourself with your diet, if you're not valuing yourself with the way that you're eating, with your lifestyle choices, with what your body what with what your vessel needs then that is not an empowered state to be in of course that is going to affect your vibration as you said and um, so you're you're again not going to be in that empowered magnetic state and also again all these things that are about self-love that are about valuing yourself are really important because that's how we're going to connect to our intuition which is going to lead us to our manifestations because when you're not setting boundaries for yourself you're putting yourself in unhealthy relationships and unhealthy diets and lifestyles you're not valuing yourself you're going to be pushing down your true feelings you're going to be um overriding them you know and of course there's going to be some underlying beliefs or fears that are causing you to choose those unhealthy environments for yourself so that is not going to allow your intuition to to come and speak to you it's like if you kept being horrible to a friend that friend is not going to feel like they're that they can speak to you and they can guide you and lead you like in your journey so I think it's really important to value yourself in your human vessel and in order to be empowered yeah, those are some really great tips there. Um, expanding on the, you know, physical lifestyle, how to be, and sort of the overarching self love, self acknowledgement, self development, self empowerment piece. Um, mm. I think it definitely goes hand in hand, right? When you're in your true element, your true center, connected to your gifts, let's call them earthly and spiritual gifts. You know, you can really harness those gifts, right? Because you're connected. It's a balance of those earthly 3D aspects of ourselves, our human body and the spiritual self. So yes, both of them are important. And we talked earlier about how we, we need that physical side of things, the physical action. And it's the same with our physical body. That's, that's something to be looked after as well. And it's also a tool to connect to our inner energy you know through there's lots of different somatic practices to connect with your energy to allow your energy to flow to generate energy and all those sorts of things through our body so that's definitely not something to be overlooked yeah and one more thing to add on this is spinal health the better you know the more healthier your spine the healthier you can or the more actively you can connect to um, your higher self through meditation and that is also then connected to manifestation because it's all part of the the, the higher being of, of you that can see beyond what you see on your earthly kind of vision so it's able to kind of help connect the dots for you that you don't realize that you can do right but you can <laughs> so yeah. spinal health and that's why I think yoga is great and then doing some yoga, a great meditation, and then some manifestation tactics or little routine is, is quite a nice thing. Actually, but on that topic, how do you actually practically bring it into your life? I kind of maybe said what I do there, but how do you add manifestation practically to your life? I know you said it's a lifestyle, but if, mm. if you know, for the listeners, if they haven't really considered this at length, yeah, you gave us a little secret hack there of your own um, experience. So I think the greatest place to start is um, with getting clarity on what you want, because manifestation is about intentionally directing your energy to create what you want in life. So if you don't have some sort of vision, some sort of anchor of where that's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. Of course, you know, it's like a, sa a a ship out at sea without a sailor really directing it and really knowing where it's going or a car um, trying to drive somewhere, but no one's put the GPS to a destination. So the first step in manifestation for me is setting that GPS destination. Like, where are you going? What What is the goal here? <laughs> Also, very importantly, what we we sometimes have these goals. Okay, okay, I want to make this much money. I want to get this car, do this job. Why do you want to do that? So go into why is that important for you? 
what is that going to then allow you to do? And then go to the third why of that. And what feeling is that lifestyle going to bring to you? And so just really getting clarity on the conscious aspect um, and like the logical, realistic aspect of what do you want here on earth? And then also the second, I I realized that that's actually a very actionable thing because you can write that out right now, like Mm -hmm. write that why is it what do you want and what why do you want that and then what feeling is beneath that um but then the second thing and the hugely um important transformational and often overlooked thing as people start their manifestation journey is aligning the subconscious to that as well because obviously the subconscious is 95% of our brain. So it's like, okay, you've told the car where to go now, um, you've got the GPS set, but 95% of the window screen is blacked out because you're you're not aware of that 95% of your subconscious. So from there, now that you know what you want and you're like, okay, I've got my goal, we then usually go into like, like writing down affirmations and you make a vision board about it. But sometimes we get stuck in that mode and that's because we haven't gone into the subconscious, which is really the the true driver in our life. We haven't gone into, is our subconscious beliefs also aligned to that vision that you wrote out there? Wow. I'm I'm loving that you mentioned the subconscious brain because it's it's a bit more of my area of um, fascination. I've been doing a lot of work in the subconscious brain and yes, agree. We don't realize that it is, it's the computer of our brain. It's the hard drive, right? It holds and stores all of the experiences we've had. So if we've had experiences where we've had letdowns, we've lost a job, we've had failed relationships, or we tried to build a business, it went bankrupt and bankrupt, or we had to, I don't know, change career because we didn't feel like we we're performing. All of these things, and I'm saying negative things deliberately because yeah. they will create that feeling of failure and lack mentality. And I can't. And so mm-hmm. if that is, if that's in the subconscious brain, there will be on a subconscious level, you feeling that you can't do it. And then that's what's going to procrastinate you away from really mm-hmm. manifesting. You might feel like, you know, some of you guys might feel like I've been trying to manifest this, but there's something that's pulling me back. And it's because something deeply rooted in that back of your brain is, is working against you almost. And it's not, it might be in the core of your brain, you go, yeah, I know I want this, but in the hard drive of the brain, it's like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because you have a belief that it won't work out based on a past experience. So I think that's really important. I think we could do a whole topic on the whole subconscious brain and manifesting, right? Oh, absolutely. It's it's the biggest um, thing that I definitely, it's, it's the, the heaviest chunk of what I work with clients with. And it's absolutely essential. And it's, it's the biggest thing that I see people stuck on, you know, um, I, you know, I get messages or I see people maybe posting in Facebook groups and things and they're like, you know, I'm doing this, this and this, I've got a vision board, but something's just not clicking, like it's not manifesting. And that's like almost always the the point that is holding people back is that subconscious and just being able to shine a light on it is hugely powerful just bringing it out of that shadow and into your awareness is transformational in itself yeah it's it's tough because you know there, there's no actual timer on it right you have to accept you have to sort of have blind faith and be and have the faith that something good is going to come and you're deserving of the good because you are worthy right coming back to the feeling of self you are worthy but you know the right time will be the right time and no other time is better than that time so just roll with it right but then that will create doubts and anxious thoughts if you're like oh well I've done this for six months and it's not coming through and oh no what's going to happen you know like I, I just and you feel worse like what would be your advice if if the person's having um, doubts with the timing of the manifestation, you mean? Timing, with it not coming through, like they've been trying, they're not seeing the results, like they're just frustrated. <laughs> yes. 
And that, that's exactly the, the result of that stuck phase, right? Where we haven't gone into the, the subconscious. So I think the, the first thing that I would say is if you feel like that, do subconscious work, do shadow work. But yeah. secondly, um, of course, there is really no, there's no, there's nothing that anyone can say to you to make you believe that your manifestation is going to come in the right time or that you're on the right path that is really an inner knowing that you have to move towards. So I think if you're in that moment, you really want to connect to some spiritual practices because if you're feeling like I need it now, I want it now, the idea of manifestation might be feeding into that because you feel like there's things that you need to manifest because you're not good enough now. So I would recommend... Mm -hmm practicing breath work, practicing yoga, practicing being present um, and doing these these sorts of spiritual practices where you can really connect to your higher self, connect to the fact that you are safe and that you are fulfilled and in your gratitude basically would be the, the big thing there. And we can't ever plan looking forward like we manifest and we decide what we want but like you said before I'm also a big believer in soul contracts as well so for one we have a purpose here we have things which we don't know about we're you're only human so you can't figure out the whole universe and if you if you continue to try to do that it's gonna cause suffering so we don't yeah. we don't <laughs> we, do, we don't want that and if you look back at your life so far how could you have possibly planned out all of those twists and turns that have led you to where you are now and that have led you to every amazing thing? You couldn't have done it. It's like having a, a puzzle and you, you know you've got all the puzzle pieces to, to complete the whole thing, but no one's shown you a picture of what it's going to look like at the end. So you have to sit there and continue to piece the puzzle together, even though you don't know what the vision at the end, like the full completed picture is exactly going to look like and which which puzzle piece is going to go first or second or third. You don't know that. That's, that's again, that's part of our human experience. A lot of the time we feel like we're in the dark, but, you know, it's in the dark where seeds grow. We don't, seeds don't grow above light you know in that initial phase they have to go into that phase um of being in the dark so if you fit if you're there right now just know it's normal it happens to everyone that's our human experience um and it's okay to feel like that and i'd really suggest you to do some spiritual um practices such as breath work and yoga and also really go into that subconscious shadow work aspect of your manifestations Great advice. And as you know, I love the yoga, the meditation. I also do theta frequency healing as well. So all of those things are super powerful. Um, and actually, on the breath work, there is an episode called Power of the Breath in Series 3. So you guys can check that out. And that's got some mini meditation in there. But there's also some more meditation breath work coverage that we will be doing so you guys can tune into. But I do believe that if you just anchor yourself in the here and now and you really stay present and grateful, the universe picks up on that vibration. Remember, it's all vibrational. So then if you're really grateful for what you've got, you will be given more. And that's how I truly believe it kind of happens, but just at your time. So actually, you mentioned the the kind of technique. So that what do you do on in the morning? I just wanted to quickly just check in with you. Like, have you got a little routine? Yes, of, of course. I've, I've got a morning routine. <laughs> I do. So what I do in the morning is, first of all, I wake up and I immediately while I'm in, in bed, I have my journal on my, like my bedside table. So I take my journal, I do my gratitude to shift into that vibrational state of gratitude. I then write out my manifestation um a little kind of practice that I do which is I have like one kind of core focus of of what I'm using my energy energy to draw in so I'll write out what I'm going to receive and the energy that I exchange for that um so for example it, that might be that I'm exchanging time I might be exchanging kindness I might be exchanging knowledge um for whatever manifestation I'm going to re receive so I'll write out my manifestation and um, ritual 
and then I'll write out my I love writing going on here. Yeah, right. that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been transformational for me, and you know, obviously, I'm lucky to to have that time to do that, and I just I value it so much. So yeah, I write out my affirmations then of the the feelings that I am embodying or whatever I need to release that that varies greatly and um, I write out my affirmations if I then also if there are any fears coming up if there's anything specific I'll go and journal on that also if not I'll get jump out of bed <laughs> jump, <laughs> jump might be a bit of an exaggeration but <laughs> get out of bed um, and I then do my signature it's kind of something that I teach my clients actually and it's a, a moving affirmation practice so it kind of incorporates breath work um affirmation and like movement to kind of stimulate energy and all that sort of stuff towards my affirmations so I do that moving affirmation um, and then I'll do a workout um I'm loving these African dance workouts on YouTube at the moment they're just like so joyful and generate so much energy for me so I'll do that and have a shower and then I'll usually do like um some energetic cleansing practice or maybe do some smudging and then I'm good to go <laughs> wow that's great I think that that if you can cover that all in a morning is brilliant but for those that can't and I mean, today I think I did something a bit different, but I do the affirmations. I don't journal, but I have a set of like a ton of affirmations. And so I recite those in the morning. Uh, then I do sort of some kind of, I put certain oils. I do either it's like Palo Santo or frankincense, set the mood, clear the energy in the home, open the windows, things like that. Then some yoga stretching. I do the sort of headstand to flow the, blood to the brain sort of a bit more stimulation there so that the crown chakra is all activated which is quite good to connect to higher self then do some then do some um meditation but I also do a water manifestation which is with a glass of water you might have heard of that one right yeah kind of like infusing the water with energy before you drink it with with your yeah. intention literally in the malasana pose of yoga where you're open with your squatting with your hips open it's great for the hip opener but with the glass of water and stating more in intentions and affirmations and then like paying tribute to the water because we are like 70 percent water so giving kind of um gratitude to the water and then drinking the water and kind of having that moment so that's kind of what i tried to because i'm so busy with work so those kind of things, I could do that in about 20 minutes, which is all right. No, but it's not like full yoga, right? I'm not saying I'm doing it. Full, so I'll do like yoga stretches and then do some of the headstand. But I'll sometimes have to do it in between a meeting because I've got to start early in the morning and then I've got 15 minutes between a meeting. So quickly, I just do that, set the alarm and I just do whatever I can. So I'm saying that because not everyone will be able to do the great mini, yes. mini so, manifestation yeah. marathon. <laughs> Because mine, honestly, like, I'm not going to lie, I te like, my morning routine is about three hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is. The thing is, for me, like, obviously, you know, I do work for myself, so I just set my own hours. Oh, and yeah, I, it's great. I usually work really late. I think that's just kind of how it, it goes. So that's what works for me and I think that's the thing like we were saying earlier it's a lifestyle and it's about what finding what works for you and your lifestyle so for example some adaptations and, and some things that clients do is for one obviously I choose to write out my affirmations as well because like I'm working really strong with them but you could just switch that for um the moving affirmation practice that I do um or, you know, just any sort of affirmation. And again, the gratitude, you, you don't have to write it down. For example, some people like to do it as they're driving to work, yeah, uh, as yeah. morning tea. And, you know, I love, I'm a really, really big fan of habit stacking, where you add a new habit that you want to incorporate into a habit that's already really formed for you. So a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I didn't just didn't get time to do my gratitude this morning. And it's like, well, did you make your morning tea like you do every other morning, you know, or did you brush your teeth? Yeah, yeah you had time for that. So let's stack that gratitude. Like maybe it's just as you're every morning, as you're making your tea, that minute you can do like, 
make a list within your head of the things you're grat- that you're grateful for and that's still going to shift you into that um gratitude and like you said maybe you do a, a few stretches and a headstand because you can't fit in a workout but you're still moving your body you know there's lots of different ways to incorporate the the principles into whatever works for your lifestyle yeah absolutely I like the driving one uh, a friend of mine does that she says she does it she says it out loud the making the tea is quite a good one today I didn't have time so I jumped into the shower and I was doing it in the shower just saying it out loud I was like oh this is cool and sometimes changing it up it makes it a bit more fun because this yeah. is not supposed to be a chore guys this is supposed to be something that makes you feel good and and I have to emphasize that because that's what happens when I don't do it, I don't actually have the best feeling that day. So it actually does really ground me and sets me in really good energy. So remember, it's not a chore. It's something that's supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to help you embrace, you know, all of the goodness in your life and who you are. Yeah, exactly. Because like you don't just do a three hour morning routine because someone told you that that's what you should do you can listen to yourself and build that trust with yourself and your intuition as I was saying before and then you can know what feels right for you to do and you do have to develop that and continue to practice that because it can be confusing with what is your your kind of higher self and something that's really going to serve you and what might be a an ego voice coming up as well but just experimenting with that and listening to what feels right for you what feels good to you what vibration different activities different morning routines put you in um is is all you really need to do that's really helpful thanks Minnie and yeah, I think that that's the the little message for everyone is just start somewhere. And I like to say incrementality. So even if it's mm-hmm. something small and then after a while you can add to it and add to it, that would be great. And then you can see how you develop it over time and make it something that's meaningful to you, that makes sense to you. So um, I know that you have this R and R and R, R and R and R, R and R and R and R and R step method. So it's refine, release, receive, right? R and R and R. R and R and R, that's it. I like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's that's my kind of framework um, that I use to guide people through stepping into manifestation and stepping into that empowered space um, to refine, release and receive. And that's, you know, just like everything we've been talking about this whole episode, people get stuck in the receive, I feel, and they want to skip straight to that as well. They're like, give me, make, let's make my vision board. Let's, let's get this. Let's get my dreams. Let's get the career. Let's get the money, all of that sort of stuff. The relationship I want is we just want to receive before we've done that really important groundwork, that soul growth and subconscious um, development of refining and releasing. And so that's, that's what I take people through. You know what? I, I love it. And I love the R and R and (laughs) I just want to say it again. (laughs) But the the refining release is so important. The way you just said that, it's important because if you want to attract more to your life, like you need to declutter. You Mm. need to do a hygiene check, right? I like to call it like do an audit on your your spiritual, physical, energetic space and body. Like are there relationships? So like you're trying to manifest a relationship. Are there relationships in your life right now that are taking away from your energy? And you wouldn't be able to manifest what you want because you've got the wrong interactions right now or they're pulling you back. Or, you know, if you're trying to manifest something at work, well, are you, you know, creating a lot of noise in another area? Not noise, but you're doing a lot in one area and you're spending so much time there. You're so busy at work. You're not allowing the space to grow and learn to receive more opportunity at that job. Or, you know, you're not making time to go and, you know, declutter kind of like what's in your mind about the new job you want to go and get. And it's all about the planning and the foundations, like setting some new foundational beams to what you want to grow, right? Yeah, absolutely. I I love that kind of metaphor of the foundational beams because that's the reason why I call it a lifestyle as well. And that's what makes it consistent and like a, a, a real shift that creates actual change rather than we you know sometimes 
I know a lot of people struggle with they get into the gratitude and you know they're doing it for a couple of weeks and then then it stops and you know it's this this, it's inconsistent and they're not actually seeing much real progress um which can get very frustrating and that's because you do need to go on to those deeper levels like you said and and also mostly look at what needs to be released i think there's a really interesting metaphor that if you're trying to as humans if we're trying to balance something out and there's two blocks on one side and three blocks on the other side our brain will naturally go to add another block to to rather than take away that third block we always want to add more like what more do we need to do what what new practice do we need to add in to receive whereas actually a lot of the time the biggest transformation comes from what do I need to release and again Ooh. the reason why we don't want to do that is because it's a lot more scary it's a lot easier to say okay I'm gonna um you know I'm gonna start writing out this manifestation every morning I'm gonna add this new manifestation practice that's that's like safe that's all good but when we say okay actually I'm gonna release these relationships that have been in my life for the past five years that gets very scary. When we say we're going <laughs> to move to a new country, we, you're going to leave your job, you're going to stop um, thinking the same thoughts that you've been thinking for the past 10 years. It's a, the, it's a lot more um, shaky for the subconscious to accept. It's a lot scarier. And that's where the real transformation happens. I love that you said that, you know, it is so true. You have to, you have to make space, make room for more to come in because you can't keep adding those blocks. And yeah, I definitely can resonate with a lot of that. And I've, I've definitely over the years uh, transformatively changed and shape shifted some things to allow the new to come in. And, And some of those things were amazing, but they would have never have come in if I still had the old there. So I, you know, I'm very happy that I lost those people, or those situations. At the time, it was hard, but now I'm like, no, it makes so much sense. Yeah, it is. It is. It's an uncomfortable process. I always say, like, what sort of growth is purely comfortable? Like, if you think about birth in a baby, not that I've had one, but it's a very uncomfortable process, right? And it's the same thing when you're birthing these new manifestations into physical reality. There's growing pains, there's things that need to be released, there's things that need to be shifted. It's going to be an uncomfortable process for sure. And like you said, stepping into those new realities and those new versions of yourself requires your old self and your old reality to die. So it can be, you know, a, an unsettling process, let's say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, who, you know, it's it's pointing again the finger at yourself. It's saying, you know what, there's no one else to blame, but it comes to me. What what is it in me that creates this? What is it in me that is holding myself back? What is it in in me that doesn't want to release, right? The change isn't for everyone, you know, high transformational lifestyle changes are not for everyone. Not everyone is cut out for it because it is quite an endurance it's quite a it's quite a marathon that you need to enjoy you need stamina for on many levels in terms of you know just not even being able to run that fast or for that long but just mentally emotionally physically and really trusting yourself so it, it you get to yeah it's a real connection with self you have to build over time right and keep building yeah absolutely it's it's taking that total responsibility for your reality which um is is definitely like you said it's not for everyone because unless you until you take that responsibility you don't have any power over it you know if you're not the creator then then how are you going to create anything but that then means you have to take responsibility for for the for the negative things for the things that you don't like for for all of it you have to just claim this total responsibility um for your reality in order to be empowered to change it ah oh, this is what i was thinking of and i needed to say this uh-huh. so there's three levels to you know um being on earth right for us so it's the the having I need to have that watch. I need to have that car. I need to have that house. I need to have those jewels. I need to do this. I need to do that. That's the first stage. So just what I'm saying is for the listeners so they can say, where am I right now, right? Mm. Second stage is doing. Oh, okay. So I need to do this and do that to get that much money. I need to do um, those um, actions and go here, go there, blah, 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 to get 
this new car. I need to do, 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 do. Okay. So it's the doing. And then finally, which is where we all want to be, and I really want us to be there, is in the receiving. Mm. I am being and I'm receiving. So it's the being. You're being, you're in your moment, you're present, and you're receiving. It doesn't mean that you don't do stuff to get there, but you're very much in the being and you're flowing with your own divine flow connected to the universe. And you're not running around trying to have, 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 because that's all materialistic. And it's all, you know, superficiality um, or do, 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 because you're not taking time for yourself to connect with yourself, but you're actually being and going with the moment. So yeah. I think it's all about trying to strive to be the being. Yeah. And again, I think it's it's just like with the R and R and R, with the <laughs> refine, release, receive, but people want to skip to the end. They want to have, they want to have all these things, but they don't want to do the step beneath that of doing the work required to have it and then they don't want to do the even more important work beneath that of being who they need to be to to go to that place so it's it's again it's making sure you're really working on those deep foundational levels rather than just trying to skim over the surface with with the outside stuff yeah and one more thing I want to say is that before I went through a major spiritual transformation I was always able to manifest quite significantly in my life, but it was, it, I, I can't explain it in words, but yes, I was manifesting and I was doing some great things and I experienced some incredible things, but it wasn't resonating with my soul. That's the best way for me to say it. So I, I could, and everyone was like, oh, wow, like you do this, you do that, like you created this. You, so I was manifesting some incredible things, but now when I manifest, this podcast is one of the babies of it. This is my soul's mission, you know? And now whatever comes around that, I'm, I feel like I'm being blessed and the universe is going, you're following your soul's mission as well. So your manifestations are going to be more relevant, meaningful and purposeful for where you're supposed to be going. Because remember, our ego might want to go over here, but our soul's going, hey, we're going over here. So that's when that friction happens. And that's painful. Uh, But the more you follow your soul's journey, the ego just has to kind of play its role when it needs to, and you keep it in check, and it just gets on the bus. Like I like to say, unless you're in the jungle and you're about to die, then your ego needs to save you. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, and that's... That's definitely, I think, what most people are doing throughout our lives when we're not, we haven't stepped into this role of the conscious creator. So we're just manifesting from our ego, which is these ego manifestations. And that's why um, when we do that refined piece, and when you go into looking at what you want to manifest, it's really important to go those three levels deeper and think about what feeling is that gonna like what what are you perceiving that that will bring you on an emotional level um because a lot of the time we don't realize why we want certain jobs or material things and we also then can be like like you said creating things that are for one not aligned with our purpose and for two we're actually really on a soul level just craving a certain emotion and then our ego is attaching it to different external things that actually is never going to get us that so even though we and even though we manifest that external thing we never get that emotion we was craving wow yeah well said Minnie power to you I'm loving this conversation honestly I have to say it's a really good chat Me too. <laughs> we could go on forever I think we need a whole series on um so um you know um I just wanted to say I think that there's a final part that I think a lot of people are going to be curious about and they probably said why haven't they said anything yet but the money mindset and the manifestation of like money and and manifesting business what what's your guidance here oh (laughs) wow Again, there's probably a whole other series there. Um, so I think that pretty much the thing with money is that our most fundamental need as a human here on earth and with the brain science of things is to be alive, right? To, to keep us safe so we can stay alive. 
And the, the thing with our society that we live in now is that money is directly related to that. Like in order for us to have the food, we need to stay alive. It's not we need to kill this animal or, or you know, make these vegetables. It's we need the money. We need a job. We need this sustenance to keep us alive. So there's so much um, weight on money that that we have placed on it in a, as a society and then not only those basic survival needs that our subconscious is constantly functioning on but we've also added this perceived happiness value to money as well and and even you know it's like if you're rich you're a rich guy then you can get the girl you want and all these different things so basically every need that we have as humans has become tied to this money so that's why it's so weighted and so many of us have mindset issues and also really deep rooted subconscious blocks um around money that we are usually not even aware of so it's again it's something that you want to start to go deeper on if you're kind of setting yourself monetary goals or maybe you're starting a business you're setting business goals don't just be in that that doing and that having state that we're talking about and that wanting to receive do the work to go deeper to ask yourself why to ask yourself what needs to be released rather than what needs to be added and um, and I love journaling as a, a, re- a good introductory um exercise to to all of this stuff that we're talking about i do think it's important to be aware that it it doesn't stop there it's not just like write all this stuff in your journal but then don't actually change anything in your life Um, (laughs) but it's a really good introduction so if you're kind of listening to this and you're thinking oh i've never even thought about what subconscious blocks i might have around money you can try a simple journal prompt such as money is if you just write that out, you know, get, take your time, get into your little space, get your journal and then write money is and just allow yourself to, to fill the page and see what different ideas, what different thoughts, what different stories come up. Yeah. Yeah. I was just about to say money is energy. And that's why I don't really have. I, I'm quite happy with money. I'm just going to sh- say this like because it's not a thing for me. I don't think about it. I don't place much effort onto it and I think that in itself is the power that I have in myself because I see it as an energy when it goes well it goes easy come easy go and it I and I believe that the if it goes more comes and if you give you receive more and so I don't don't tend to like think about stuff as you were saying it I was like oh yeah credit card bill hmm. all right whatever whatever <laughs> really whatever because <laughs> You know, I know I can pay the my my monthly balance or whatever, but whatever, like I just know that more's coming and I know I'm always going to be provided for. I think there's that feeling of I know in myself I'm going to be fine. And I think a lot of us can't do that sometimes. And that can be a I I don't know if I can have cover the next month. I don't know if I can pay my bills. And that can be quite scary. So uh, you know. That safety aspect, isn't it, which we're always, you know, subconscious always wants. And it definitely comes up a lot with money. Like, can I, am I going to be okay? Is there going to be enough? Am I going to be supported? And of course, all of those spiritual beliefs that you can send yourself back into that, like, we live in an infinite universe. There is an abundance of anything. As you said, money is just an energy exchange. So you're always going to be supported. You're always going to be provided for. Um, and it's definitely, it's great to recycle back to that. I think especially like for me, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and in the entrepreneurship space, there's so many big goals, which is amazing. And we have these big aspirations like making a million and having a seven figure business or making six figures and all these different um, things, a certain type of house that we want to buy. Um, so then that adds more layers of things because it's it, now it's not just your survival, but it's it's this um, social status or, or the, the yeah. what you're able to create as well. And are you going to be able to be there? And again, it requires stepping into a, a new level of yourself if, if you've never ha- seen that sort of abundance before. Um, so if you're, if you do the exercise with money is, and you feel quite untriggered by it, like you said, maybe if you have some bigger goals, like you can also explore with them as well and, and see like, if I was rich, what, what would that mean? What would happen if I was rich at like, and 
is that something that you want, you know, because a lot of times you, you want it, but then a lot of fears come up as well of like, maybe is that the right thing to do? Is that a good thing in society? Like, is yeah. that greedy? Uh, am I capable of that? You know, are, are people going to buy for my business? Are people going to want to work with me? Da, 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 da. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great topic to, to delve into. I think, especially um, if you are an entrepreneur, yeah, and one thing I want to say to you guys, because I have to say something from my heart and soul, mm -hmm. this podcast is not for me trying to be, make a business. This podcast mm -hmm. came directly from my soul's mission. I, I knew that I was going in the direction of my soul. I wanted to do a podcast years ago. It was never going to be on these topics. I went through quite a significant transformational journey, and I realized that there's a lot that I could share with the world and there would be other meaningful souls like yourself, Minnie, that would want to come and join forces to help humanity and help each other share this powerful knowledge because the most powerful thing we can give each other is and share knowledge, right? So this is why I created this podcast. Do I make money from it? No. Have I thrown loads of money into it? Yes. And does that bother me? No. Because for me, this is like an act of charity in some ways, but I know that at some point, you know, some great opportunities may arise. I do. And I'm very open to receiving them to help it grow even more. But I can say this, all of the guests we've had have just naturally like come through or I've like just, you know, miraculously just thought, oh, let me talk to them. And all of the great energy and all of that, that in itself is probably better than money and funding, right? Because it's people's energy, wisdom, insight, life experiences. You can't put a price tag on that. So I feel very blessed to be able to say that this podcast is coming to you from the heart of my soul and probably the heart of the souls of, of all those involved and many here today, just sharing her own personal experience and why she actually came on this journey to now help others. But, you know, if you're thinking about taking up a business, maybe think about where your soul's going. If you were to start a business that was in alignment with your soul's journey, where do you think the universe is going to take you with that? I'll leave that thought with you guys on that one. <laughs> so, Minnie, thank you so much. You are a wonderful woman, beautiful soul, lovely young lady. <laughs> thank you so much for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation because I did. I absolutely did. I had an amazing time talking about such valuable things. And yeah, I'm so happy to be able to share this with your listeners. And I'd hope that, you know, something transforms in your life from, from, from something you picked up today. Awesome. And I think you have to come back on again. I think we'll have a chat and we'll see, but there's so much more we can talk about. I've just loved the energy with you. You're such an inspiring lady. And I think there's so much more we could share with the listeners. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. But in the meantime, before we get you back on again, uh, where can we find you? Yes. So you can find me on Instagram, which is at Minnie Courtney, M-I-N-N-I-E. And all my links are kind of there. You can also find me on TikTok. I have a lot of fun over on there. And that's Manifest with Minnie. Oh, I like that. Manifest with Mini. Okay, cool. So I will put your details in the description box of the episode so the guys can follow you. And you've got some great content. And also on the Instagram page, I'll be putting lots of stuff up about Mini. So check it out. And with that being said, we always love to end with a beautiful quote. And Mini's going to leave us with a nice quote. Yes, our quote today is, believe you deserve it and the universe will serve it.